Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on in our discussion of gram-negative organisms with Haemophilus influenza. Haemophilus influenza is a very small gram-negative coxobacillary rod. It's transmitted via aerosol transmission, so coming out of the mouth with an aerosolized form, and it also produces IgA protease. So if you remember back to our previous video, we have the shin bacteria. The Haemophilus influenzae is the HI and shin for those that produce IgA protease that can help increase their ability to colonize the mucosal membranes. The most common type of infection of Haemophilus influenzae is an unencapsulated or non-typable strain. Uh, that's the most thing, the thing that we see the most in patients that are infected with Haemophilus influenza. And the reason that we typically see the non-typable strains as the most common now is because we have that vaccine for the capsular type B. So we are able to decrease the risk of a type B infection due to our vaccination. However, we do have some non-typable ones that have become more prominent now because those are not covered under the vaccine. These bacteria do grow very well in the chocolate auger. Um, now, the specific thing about chocolate auger is that it has factor 5 and factor 10 on it. And as you see in this picture here, we're seeing the factor 5 and the factor 10 on this chocolate auger but we're not seeing any growth of the bacteria around those. That's because Haemophilus influenza requires both factor 5 and factor 10 to be able to grow on this auger. So you see in this top section here, that disc contains both factor 5 and factor 10, which allows our bacteria to grow. Factor 5 is the NAD+, and factor 10 is hematin, which aids in the growth of Haemophilus influenza uh, on a culture. You can also grow this with Staph aureus, which Staph aureus will give uh, factor 5 or the NAD plus because of the hemolysis of red blood cells. Uh, so that is another way that we can grow this uh, in a laboratory setting. So let's try and remember what does Haemophilus influenza cause. This little mnemonic of sorts here should be able to help you. So Haemophilus, remember the uh, E-M-O-P for Haemophilus causing E epiglottitis, M meningitis, O otitis media, and P pneumonia. So Haemophilus in and of itself and the way it's spelled tells us what it causes. Epiglottitis, meningitis, otitis media, and pneumonia. Now it is worthy to note, just because you see influenzae in the name, Haemophilus influenzae, this does not cause the flu. That is due to the influenza virus, not Haemophilus influenza. Also, the vaccine is given to children, usually in the 2 to 18 month range, to help reduce the risk of Haemophilus influenza infection. Now, we talked about Haemophilus causes epiglottitis. What is epiglottitis? In this picture here, we see uh, from the top down, so this is putting a tube in someone's throat, looking down at the epiglottis. This is the epiglottis. You can see this is a very, very inflamed epiglottis that is going to be very difficult for patients to breathe, to swallow, to uh, especially for food to pass down. So this is a, a large inflammation of the epiglottis that can cause problems uh, due to the Haemophilus influenzae infection. We treat this with amoxicillin, with or without clavulanate, uh, which is augmentin, for mucosal infections. So if they have the epiglottitis, we're going to use the augmentin or amoxicillin. If they have meningitis, so we say that it can cause meningitis, we will use ceftriaxone because remember, ax in ceftriaxone causes, permeates the blood-brain barrier to help treat the meningitis. And then rifampin can be used for prophylaxis for those that have a close contact with someone that has Haemophilus influenzae. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.